Something that a lot of women wonder about is hypothyroidism. You know, the symptoms of hypothyroidism, which in my opinion are really similar to perimenopause and menopause, can be things like hair falling out, slowing metabolism, feeling tired, fatigued, and sluggish. Now, I wanna talk about in this video something called subclinical hypothyroidism. I wanna talk about what it is, what that means for you, and how you can potentially treat it. So if you're interested, you've got some of those symptoms, stick around. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I'm the program director of the menopause clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, and I see patients on a consultative basis for perimenopause, menopause, low libido, and all things in between. I love getting to help women in midlife and menopause, and that's also why I've created this channel, so please give this channel a few likes, hit that subscribe button, and that really helps the YouTube algorithm tell more women to find this type of content. So let's get into the juice here. What is hypothyroidism? Because I wanna talk about subclinical hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is when you have a slow and sluggish thyroid. Now, the most common form of hypothyroidism is an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. And there's several things that you can do looking at antibodies for Hashimoto's. These types of antibodies can also be helpful when we talk about subclinical hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is defined as having a TSH greater than 5.5. And typically you'll also have these types of symptoms, slow, sluggish, fatigued, hair falling out, weight gain. Again, these are really typically pretty broad, who couldn't say they have those symptoms at any given time, but it is the reason that most women go to their clinician wanting to have their thyroid checked. And I will also say, if it is this, that can sometimes be helpful because it can be fairly easily reversed or improved with medication. You wanna check that TSH on probably more than one occasion to be really sure that you have hypothyroidism. Now, while I said over 5.5, sometimes we'll th see levels that are pretty obvious, like a TSH of 20 or 40. I remember one time I had a patient come to me who had a TSH of 120, and she was not feeling very good. Now, subclinical hypothyroidism is a little different, so hang on to your seats here. That's when your TSH is normal, but your free T3 or your free T4 are not normal. So what is free T3 and free T4? Well, TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone is the hormone that your brain releases to go tell your thyroid to release those active forms that actually get that job done. And that's known as T3 and T4. So those are the little hormones that are getting all this stuff done. When your TSH is high, what's happening is that your brain is saying, well, there's no T3 and no T4. So pump up that TSH, pump up that TSH, give them that message, give them the message. And for some reason, there's just no free T3 and free T4. That's when if you have Hashimoto's, there may be something that's incorrectly attacking the T3 and T4. And so by giving you some thyroid hormone, that actually can help alleviate those symptoms because it just actually is doing the job. In subclinical, the TSH might be normal, but for some reason you're still not getting enough T3 and T4. Now, that's why it is really helpful sometimes to check a free T4, which your doctor may be able to do for you if you ask in the right type of way. You could say something like, what about subclinical hypothyroidism? I still really want this panel, and that shouldn't be too hard to do if I'm already gonna go get my TSH checked. When I find subclinical hypothyroidism, I definitely do want to treat that because we want to make sure that your body is functioning in its optimal state. Thyroid is really important and we don't wanna over treat you. We really only wanna treat you if it's necessary, if you have clear hypothyroidism or if you have subclinical where you have low levels of T3, T4, but your TSH is normal because it really affects your overall quality of life. 
Risk factors for this, especially hypothyroidism, include common things that you may already know about your health history. Like if you had gestational thyroid condition where hypothyroidism was found during your pregnancies, but later on it was fine and you're not being treated. And another risk factor is if you have any other autoimmune condition. So really common autoimmune conditions can also be celiac disease, pernicious anemia, also premature ovarian insufficiency. There's other things like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and a couple other things that are also autoimmune like skin conditions, lichen sclerosis, and lupus. But if you have any of those, you definitely should be checking a TSH frequently to make sure you don't develop this over time, particularly in perimenopause. I did a great video a long time ago here, and I'll link it, and this was when I was just learning YouTube, but perimenopause, where those estrogen levels are starting to become volatile and fluctuating, can also really affect your thyroid. So you could also be diagnosed with a thyroid condition in perimenopause, which seems super strange to be in maybe your mid-40s and have a new condition, but it is fairly common. Another area for me, which is also really important when talking about using thyroid hormones and you know correcting that TSH is, I truly believe that a TSH of between 1.5 and 2.5 is quite optimal. So if you're on a thyroid medication, oftentimes I will check these for my patients, especially as we're starting hormone therapy because the estrogen replacement can definitely throw off either if you need more or less thyroid medication if you're already on one. But I do sometimes adjust a thyroid medication if someone's TSH is found to be three or four or five and they're taking a thyroid medication, I will adjust it up a teeny tiny bit because I do want the TSH to be around 1.5 to 2.5. I've found that that is a really optimal level for women. Now, we don't want it higher than it needs to be, certainly that may feel really good or maybe gives you a little bit of extra energy, but anything that seems too good to be true is probably coming with a price. We don't know if too much thyroid could hurt your brain health, your bone health, well certainly we do know that, or your cardiovascular health. So be careful that you're not overdoing your thyroid. So again, ideally you'd want a TSH between 1 and 2.5 if you're on a thyroid medication. Now, I'm sure YouTube is flooded with tons of videos on hypothyroidism and subclinical hypothyroidism, and there's more and more and more to the story. But I wanted to give you a brief overview, especially when thinking about thyroid disorders in midlife, at perimenopause, and through the menopause transition, and if you're on a thyroid medication when you're starting hormone therapy. Now, if you've watched this part of the video and you say, I think I've had my TSH and my free T4 checked, should I have them checked again when they were normal? I would say certainly you can, but it may just be perimenopause. Remember those changing levels of estrogen, that declining level of estrogen can cause very similar symptoms of hypothyroidism. So many women without knowing about perimenopause or early menopause are thinking thyroid when they're having irregular bleeding, they're having hair loss, sleepless nights, and they're dismayed to find out that their thyroid is normal. So if this is you and you've gotten this part of the video, watch my playlist here on perimenopause because this may be more of what's going on and the changing estrogen level can cause so many symptoms. This is also why I host my masterclass, the Reclaiming Menopause Masterclass. Don't be fooled. I have many women who are in perimenopause as well, and I teach you about how we use estrogen, progesterone, sometimes testosterone replacement to help you thrive again in midlife. It is a course where I also can give you some support, but it is really geared for women who are considering or on hormone therapy, but not kind of on the right dose. So if you're interested in that, definitely check the link in the description below. I also host my own podcast, Health by Heather Hirsch. So if you're new to the channel and you're just stumbling upon me, definitely dive into my podcast because there is tons of free information for you there that I know you're going to love if you found this video really helpful. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. That helps the YouTube algorithm. That helps me as well so that I know I should carve out time to keep making these videos for you guys. 
love seeing this community start to grow and grow and grow. And sometimes when I do calls for the masterclass, it is so heartwarming to know how much you guys have benefited from these videos. Also, if you want to see me as a patient, you'll have to call the clinic and see me in Massachusetts. That's something else I can also do. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye everyone.